Can I give an update on COVID today? We've got 9,630 new cases. Uh, 3,419 of those are rapid antigen test uh, registration. So again, thank you to Queenslanders for continuing to register when they take a, a test and get a positive result at home. It's really important you make sure you're getting that information into our register as well. Uh, we did 22,437 tests in the last 24 hours. Sadly, I can report uh, a high number of deaths again, 16 deaths uh, reported in the last 24 hours. Uh, that brings us to 218 deaths, deaths since the 13th of December. Uh, the age range um, in the main are between their 50s and 90s, but sadly I can report one under the age of 10. Uh, and I'll have uh, Dr Gerard speak to that one shortly. Um, but it is sad uh, to see uh, those deaths and certainly of a young person. Seven of those deaths occurred in aged care residents uh, and that puts us at 114 deaths in aged care residents to date. Uh, we have currently 764 patients in our public hospitals, 49 in ICU, 26 non-ventilated and 23 ventilated. Um, so this is seeing the numbers come down uh, a bit again and 74 patients reported in the private hospitals with only one in ICU and none ventilated, which is good news as well. So we're seeing those numbers come down slowly, uh, but what I want to say is that you know, we will um, continue to ensure that our, that our hospitals are prepared and planning. I have visited Logan Hospital yesterday, Redcliffe Hospital last week, as well as the Gold Coast, and the new triage uh, portable buildings are being uh, installed both at Redcliffe and Logan as well. We know that these uh, new buildings are really helping uh, to help with triaging of COVID patients, but also the flow off our ambulance services. Uh, and we're seeing real benefits uh, from our supervisors, our paramedic supervisors who are working on the ground at our ramps, at our EDs, and also working with these new triage bays uh, that they've seen a significant decrease in lost uh, time, which is fantastic. So I know they'll be welcome uh, at these new other hospitals as well. Our vaccination rate is 92.03%, so great to see our first dose is over 92%, now an 89.63% double dose. So we're slowly creeping towards that 90% double dose. Again, I remind people, if you are due for your second dose, you can come forward and get it at any one of our uh, clinics. You can also go to a pharmacy or GP. If you are someone who had had COVID recently uh, and you were due for your second dose, when your symptoms um, have gone and you are healthy again, uh, you can come forward and get your second jab. And of course, our boosters, please keep coming forward and getting boosted. We're at 56.6% .6 boosters and over 1.448 million uh, cumulative boosters have been administered so far in Queensland. I, um, I am concerned about the uh, 5 to 11 and the 12 to 15 year old age group. Uh, we're at 35% 5 to 11 year olds first dose, uh, which is over 167,571 doses. But that uh, rate of 35% has certainly been slowing down in the last week. School is going back next week. We really do encourage parents to come forward with their young ones and get them vaccinated. And again, our 12 to 15 year old, uh, our dose is at 75.5 first dose and 67.54% double dose. This is too low. Um, these kids are gonna be going back to schools. So the teenagers are going back to school. Um, there is no reason whatsoever Considering that our adult population is 92% first dose, there is no reason why your children's vaccination rates shouldn't be at the same rate. Uh, there is so much opportunity to walk in, to book in, to go to a pharmacy, to go to a GP or go to a public vaccination clinic. There is absolutely no reason to wait. If you've got a booking in the future at a public clinic, there is walk-ins available right now. You can bring that forward, you can walk in today, they'll, they'll cancel your future booking, it's okay. You don't have to wait for that booking for that first dose, you can walk in. Um, and I really encourage people to do that. 